this section really uh, split into it's actually five parts. Um, I forgot to put the, bottom, the other one on the bottom. Uh, do a little bit about the give you a bit of information about the renewable heat incentive, um, how that is likely to pan out. Um, a bit on capital expenditure of some of these items. Uh, things that you shouldn't forget, like operating costs. Um, how you might sort of put all that together in terms of establishing a financial appraisal of a system. And then we'll look at some case studies of, uh, of three glass house systems that are out there, up and running, working, and how they stack, uh, stack up financially. Um, so renewable heat incentive then. Um, I've written down there, it's the biggest influence on biomass heating in recent years. Um, and it will be, as you'll see later on, in terms of what you're going to get back for installing a, a biomass heating system. Um, the aim of it, obviously, to increase the uptake of the renewable heating technologies through financial support. And I don't know how many of you are aware of the feed-in tariff system for solar PV, wind, um, and the like in, in terms of generating electricity. But this is a very similar mechanism in terms of um, people generating renewable heat. It's going to be available for solid um, biomass, most of the things that we've talked about today in quite some depth, soil, wood chips, wood pellets, etc. In the consultation document was also include renewable fuel CHP, biogas and solar thermal. Um, as you can see, the consultation was published in July 2009. The final answer was expected um, in December this year, the last year, 2010, but it wasn't forthcoming. The uh, latest is February. I've written down April there because I'm, I'm a bit of a pessimist. Uh, has Daniel got any <coughs> thoughts on that? My hot tip was the 8th of December, but that didn't come through, so 22nd of February was the latest hot tip I've had. Right. And as uh, Matt will testify and Glyn will testify, there are a lot of systems sitting out there waiting and waiting and waiting. They've gone through all the planning, gone through all, all the specifying of the system, they're just waiting for this to come in before they actually hit the go button um, to make sure that it is going to be financially um, beneficial for them. So the main points of the RHI, as per the consultation document, is going to be paid for each kilowatt hour of qualifying renewable heat output. And the important thing to note is output, not input. So it, it, it makes you think about the most efficient boiler system that you can install. There's going to be different tariffs for different technologies. So there'll be different tariffs for um, biomass burning on, and renewable CHP and solar thermal. But they'll also be scaled for technology size, so a smaller system will be likely to get more per kilowatt hour than a larger system. Just like the feed-in tariff system, they're going to be paid for a set lifetime, and in this case it's 15 years. And it will be only available for new installations installed after the public publication of the consultation document, which was July 2009. Having said that, until we see the final document, these are still not yet confirmed. These are the, the tariff rates as per the consultation document. There is going to be a band 45 to 500 kilowatts, um, 9 pence per kilowatt hour, what they call the DEEM system. So they were going to try and establish the, um, the heat demand of your, of your building and pay you on that to make sure that you weren't wasting heat, you weren't throwing away heat unnecessarily. Um, the chances are that DEEMing is going to, is going to be um, is, is not going to be the case and everything's going to have to be metered. Um, in the consultation document again there was solid biomass of that size so anything that was metered over and above the deemed output they were going to pay 2p a kilowatt hour for instead of the 9p. And then the other category above 500 kilowatts so everything above 500 kilowatts was going to be around that band. Now that 1.6 was designed for renewable CHP or biomass CHP and 2.5 was for the burning of biomass in, in heat system as well, just like we've seen today. Where do we think this is actually going to go? Well, this is the word on the street, um, not casting stone. There's going to be an extra category put in, so there's an extra category put in in the 500 kilowatt to 1 megawatt band. Um, so 45 to 500, 5 point, uh, between 5 and 6p. 500 to a megawatt between 3 and 5p, and above a megawatt, 2 to 3p. Um, so, as you can see, as you'll see later on, we start putting some uh, economics together, um, potentially very lucrative. So, what is it actually worth? Well, if you're buying straw at £55 a tonne, 
um, and you're getting the RHI at two tenths a kilowatt, it's actually worth more than the value of the store in terms of, in terms of the fuel cost. Um, wood chip under a pound a ton, it's got a high, slightly higher energy density, uh, sorry, slightly less energy density, so you'll only be getting 60 pence a, sorry, 60 pounds a ton in terms of the RHI. Wood pellets, slightly higher energy density than straw, 85 pounds compared to a fuel cost of 180 pounds. So again, still significant amounts of money off the fuel cost itself. We're going to work through some, some figures a little bit later on, but just to tell you where we're at in a bit of a recap, I'm going to base all my figures to start with on Tim's theoretical 5 hectare nursery with a 3 megawatt boiler, um, which is burning 25,000 megawatt hours of gas a year. There's two options, optimised, no CO2 required, running at 80%, and optimised um, with CO2 required, running at 40% heat output from biomass, and we'll see how different that makes the systems um, in, terms of, in terms of the finances. So what influences the costs? Well, it's everything that we've talked about this morning. Um, the type and size of the boiler, all the heat distribution systems, the, the install, everything that you need, maybe a, a heat store system. Um, obviously, your fuel storage and feed systems, whether you need longer term fuel stores, whether you need lots of hard standing to season wood, um, any levels of automation, um, so automatic firing, automatic tube cleaning, etc. Any other buildings, access, and maybe you're going to have to put in a million pound access road for all these trucks that are coming down your road or, or what have you. And any uh, emission abatement requirements, so if the RHI comes out with some stringent NOx emission targets in there, then that's going to be quite a an important factor to consider. These are some costs of some systems that um, the Carbon Trust put together a couple of years ago now. How applicable they are to greenhouse uh, and glasshouse systems is, is debatable, largely because there are very few, if any, glasshouse systems within that, uh, within this band. Sorry, not within the band, but within, within this group. Um, I've I put a tool together that tries to calculate the capital or give you an idea of what the capital costs are of a biomass system of various different sizes. I have actually based it on, on this curve, um, but I've added, I think, 20% uh, to that cost, the increased complexity and, and the moving on of, of technology and, and, and the increasing cost. But as you can see, further down this end, which is where um, a lot of the bigger nurseries are going to be, one and a half megawatts plus, uh, that's going to be, what, £120 a kilowatt compared to your oil boiler or gas boiler at, uh, might tell me, £50 a kilowatt? Something like that, so, you know, at least twice, if not three times the cost. And the smaller you get, um, the more expensive it gets in terms of cost per kilowatt. So they're biomass systems, three to four times the cost of a fossil fuel system. If we look at Tim's three hectare nursery, uh, sorry, five hectare nursery with a three megawatt system, I've estimated that to be about £480,000, excluding the heat store, total install cost, which I don't think is unrealistic. You add in a heat store on there, um, a typical glasshouse horticultural heat stores, £250 a cubic metre. If you want 50 cubic metres a hectare, it's going to cost you £62,500. So, albeit using the smallest biomass system to deliver the, the most heat is the best option, as, he, as Tim was talking about this morning, um, you've still got some fixed costs such as buildings and hard standing, etc. Um, depending on how much fuel you need to store, you, you're still going to have to incur those costs. Um, there may well be a marginal extra cost of, of slightly larger boilers, whether that's an influence on, on, on you and some of these systems come in set sizes, you might want an 1139 kilowatt boiler, but you might only be able to get a 1250. Um, you've just got to consider those options when you're, when you're costing your system out. <coughs> in terms of fuel costs, these are again based on Tim's, Tim's nursery. Um, I put a couple of scenarios in here. Um, if you're going to run, let's say, 80% wood chip at £100 a tonne, and the rest of it is gas, it's going to cost you 680000 uh, to fuel that nursery for that year. If, on the other hand, you're going to do it with straw, straw being a lot cheaper at £55 a tonne, albeit the same 80-20 split, it's going to cost you 378000 And compare that to what it is on gas alone, um, let's say 
2.2 pence a kilowatt hour, which I don't think is unrealistic for what people are paying. 52 pounds a megawatt hour, uh, 550,000. The influence of the RHI on that, um, think back to that table before, um, the RHI income in this case is going to be exactly the same because it's still the same amount of heat output. So 340,000 you're going to get from the RHI. That has a significant effect on your costs. Um, with your wood chip, it comes down to that you're saving yourself something like uh, 40, 48,000 pounds, 44,000 pounds, whereas, um, sorry, saving against 100% gas. That's not right, is it? Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Yeah, wood chip 210,000. Over the, the straw, it's 512,000 compared to. And that's a saving figure, not a, a total cost figure. The other things that you mustn't forget, though, and as you can see, um, are quite quite large costs. Daily operation, let's say it's an hour a day, which seems to be fairly typical for um, speaking to these people who've installed the system. And that includes things like fuel loading, daily checks, at emptying, that sort of thing. Um, you're going to have to have a guy with a telehandler if you're loading Heston bales onto a conveyor and you know, it all takes a little bit of time. £25 an hour, that's nearly £10,000 a year that you've got to add on to your operating costs that you'd have over and above a gas system. Maintenance. Once they're installed and all the teething problems are, 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 have been got over, actually the maintenance on these isn't, isn't too arduous. Um, again, t um, talking to people who've installed these systems, one day a month seems about realistic, um, plus a few spares for bits that have got broken, bits that need replacing. I estimated there uh, three, three to five thousand pounds a year. Annual servicing. No one's again. No, no one can come up with any hard and fast numbers for this yet. It all depends on the particular boiler um, type that you've installed. Um, but there's some bands there that uh, again the Carbon Trust had some. Um, some figures. Um, I put an upper limit against these. I said, yeah, it's between 800 and 2,000 for less than a megawatt, and five to 8,000 for greater than three, uh, three and a half megawatts. Um, again, a lot of these systems are still fairly new. A lot of people still finding their feet and, and that sort of thing. So you may well find that one boiler manufacturer quotes you 5,000, the other one quotes you um, significantly more than that. But don't forget about it because it is quite a large cost. One of the other large costs that a lot of people wouldn't immediately realise is electricity. There's a lot more motor, motors and fans and pumps and compressed air for automatic tube cleaning and that sort of thing. Again, rule of thumb figures, 1.5% of the heat energy produced is what you'd be um, requiring in terms of electricity. And as you can see, £20,000 a year at 8, at 8 pence a kilowatt hour. So how do you sort of weigh all these in together and try and come up with a, with a proper financial appraisal of, of what you're doing? Well, one way is with the, the Carbon Trust Biomass Heat Accelerator Calculator, which uh, Daniel probably knows quite well. Um, that is available to use at that website. Um, when you get these presentations, you should be able to click on that link and it will take you there. Um, it is a very comprehensive tool. It goes through a lot of things, establishing heat demands and so on and so forth. But, uh, obviously. Because it's comprehensive, it, it does take quite a bit of time to go through. What I would say is, if you are going to consider using that, make sure you read the user manual because there's a lot of stuff in there and it'll help you get over some of the, the pitfalls in using the system. As part of this, we decided to put together a much simpler calculator, just a, you know, almost a bit like a ready reckoner kind of, a, of an approach, um, which we call the Farm Energy Biomass Economic Calculator. It's a nice slap, snappy title for you. Um, again, it will be available to download alongside the slides um, on the website. It's a lot simpler to use, but obviously, because it's simpler to use, it's a lot less comprehensive than the Carbon Trust one. Um, and I'm going to use that in, in, in the following slides to, to, to show you some of the paybacks of these systems. What you will need is your total energy consumption as of, uh, in terms of annual consumption, as of this year or last year or an average of the last five years, and some idea of fuel costs. Uh, in terms of what you're paying currently. It's then customizable to see the effect of boiler size, so you can put different boiler sizes in there. You can change the, the percentage of heat that's going to be supplied to your nursery by biomass. 
different fuel types, different costs, O and M, and that sort of thing to come out with with a number at the end. And rather than looking at that on there, So this is this is the front page. This is where you, you put all your fuel costs and, and and so on and so forth in. Um, so your current heating fuel use come, comes into this block here. Um, different fuel types down here. How much? How many kilowatt hours of gas or how many liters of gas oil? How many tons of coal, etc. And just an average cost um, per unit of per pound per unit of purchase. So you can see there in this example, I put 450. Uh, sorry, four million, four and a half million kilowatt hours at 2.2 pence, and it cal calculates the final figure. That obviously um, you can then put in some boiler efficiencies, whether you agree or disagree with the, the default numbers in there. Um, anything in a white box you can change. One thing I would say is up here, just ask if you nursery area as well. Um, that will give you a total tons of carbon output as well. Then little bit about where you want to go in terms of biomass fuels. Um, how much energy do you think you want to supply from, or you think is likely to be able to be supplied by the biomass system? Um, it's in steps of 5% all, all the way down to zero. Um, put in a biomass boiler efficiency again, it defaults to 85%, but you can change that if you, if you feel that's unrealistic. And then a load of different fuel types, straw, miscanthus, various um, moisture content percent wood chip and wood pellets. If you know how much the, the cost of the fuel is, um, just hit yes on quote received. If not, then there's some, there's some ballpark cost in there. Likely cost a tonne, for example, for straw is £55 a tonne. Or you can say, yes, someone quoted me £36 a tonne for it. And that will give you the total cost of the heating fuel and therefore the, the, the fuel cost saving over running on what you're already using. In terms of capitals and operating and that sort of thing, put in the size of boiler that you want. Again, if you've had a quote for it, if you say yes, you can write the number in. If you say no, it'll give you a ballpark <coughs> cost based on that, that curve that I was showing you earlier. Similar thing for heat scores. Um, it will uh, calculate the uh, uh, heat store size that you require based on 50 cubic metres per hectare. Um, and that's all your capital expenditure items in that block there. Operating costs, um, you can put in your electricity unit rate. We've worked it out at 1.5% of, of heat energy use. So you'll see this number go up and down as, as you change the percent of heat supplied by biomass. Operation and maintenance, so your daily, your daily checks, etc. Your, your maintenance and some sort of hourly rate as to what you pay this guy that's doing that. Servicing. Quote received, so again, if you say no, then there's some standard figures that, that go in based on the, the table that uh, I showed you earlier. If you say yes and know what it is, you can just put the number in. And then, very simply, comes out with an economic appraisal at the bottom. Um, totals up your annual operating costs, your, to your total capital costs, what it's worth to you. Now, if you've selected that you're eligible for RHI, which if it's a new system, it will be, it'll put a figure for the value of the RXI to you in there. Uh, but that's obviously based on the, the proposed, not the proposed rates, on, on what we think it's going to be. So as soon as we know, we'll, we'll update the table so that we've got some accurate figures in there. But at the moment, it's based on, on that second table of rates that I showed you. And just calculates a simple payback, tons of carbon saved, and the cost per tonne of carbon saved, which may be useful for any loan application or, or something that you might be doing. So as I said, we'd, we'd work through a couple of examples um, in terms of what the paybacks and, and so on would be. Um, this is using Tim's theoretical uh, five hectare nursery again. Um, 
basically the bottom line is once you take into account all the costs um, the saving against uh, using 100% gas comes out at about that, that amount um, you add in the influence of R8 Xi um, and you're saving that amount over using gas alone how does that affect the paybacks well let's say the system this 3 megawatt system was uh, including the cost of a heat store it's £542,500 to install even without RHI the payback of the system comes down to about 4 years with RHI significantly less uh, just over a year if we don't take quite so ro a rosy view of it let's say that we can only use 40% of, um, of our heat demand from, from biomass again £62,000 saving before the RHI, the influence of the RHI, this is using straw.